What if a nuclear bomb was used in World War I? In 1938, history changed forever when German nuclear physicists Otto Hahn, Fritz Strassmann, and Lise Meitner discovered nuclear fission in a lab in Berlin. They discovered that an atom splitting into lighter atoms caused a powerful blast. This was groundbreaking. Humans discovered a new way to power technology, but at the same time, they opened the door for nuclear horrors, atomic bombs. When Americans heard that Germans were developing nuclear weapons, they themselves started to work on their own project purely out of fear. Most of this project was done in New Mexico and Los Alamos. So in 1939, President Roosevelt set up a team to study uranium. He got scientists, military officials, and they were all trying to figure out how to use uranium as a weapon. The government eventually started to fund this research, which was happening at Columbia University. And in 1941, the committee was officially renamed the Office of Scientific Research and Development, AKA the OSRD. In 1941, Two engineers from the Army joined the OSRD, and President Roosevelt transitioned the project into a military branch following the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. And so began the Manhattan Project. President Roosevelt made this project with a strict goal in mind to weaponize nuclear energy. There were facilities in New Mexico, Tennessee, Washington, and even in Canada. A lot of research, a lot of tests. Cut to July 16th, 1949, the Trinity test was conducted. The first atomic bomb to be detonated in a New Mexico desert. It was deemed a success with mushroom clouds reaching up to 40,000 feet high. This test changed history. Because at this time, the Allied powers had defeated Germany and Europe. Only Japan had intended to fight until the very end in the Pacific. On August 6th, just a month later, the Enola Gay bomber dropped a little boy bomb over Hiroshima, wiping out everyone and everything over a five square mile radius. And then just three days later, on August 9th, the Fat Man bomb was dropped over Nagasaki, destroying over three square miles of the city. The Japanese surrendered only five days later. The nuclear fission technology created by the Manhattan Project became the foundation for atomic diplomacy. In order to find out what would happen if these bombs were used in World War I, we first have to fully understand the impact that they had. In late July, Japan's government refused the demand for surrender put forth in the Potsdam Declaration, which had included the terms prompt and utter destructions if they were to refuse. So General Douglas MacArthur and other military commanders decided to continue with bombing Japan, with Operation Downfall on the horizon. Operation Downfall was a large-scale invasion that would have resulted in over 1 million American casualties. So in order to avoid that, President Harry Truman decided to use the atomic bomb as a way to end the conflict as fast as possible, and with less US casualties. Secretary of State James Burns fully believed that this is a bomb that would do greater things than end the war. He knew that this would put the United States in a position of power after the war. So out come the bombs, little boy and fat man. Hiroshima was the first location for the initial strike. Just 500 miles away from Tokyo, the 9,000 pound uranium-235 bomb was placed aboard a modified B-29 bomber, the Enola Gay. It was named after the pilot's mother, Colonel Paul Tibbetts. At 8.15 a.m., the bomb dropped via parachute and subsequently destroyed everything in that five mile radius. 50% of the damage was done from the initial blast, 35% was due to extreme heat, and 5% was initial radiation. Now they didn't know this at the time, but 10% of that explosion was residual radiation, so it came after the fact. So although 80,000 lives were taken the day of, tens of thousands more would soon meet their fate due to radiation exposure. Then just three days later, after the Japanese had not surrendered, Major Charles Sweeney flew another B-29 named Boxstar from Tinian, and this time the target was Nagasaki. The Fat Man bomb was dropped at 11.02 that morning and it was even more powerful than that in Hiroshima. Fat Man, as its name suggests, weighed in at around 10,000 pounds and was set to release a 22 kiloton blast. Thing is, the landscape of Nagasaki had narrow valleys, so the destruction reached 2.6 square miles. Japan's emperor, Hirohito, announced an unconditional surrender on August 15th, after describing the attack as a new and most cruel bomb. It's actually hard to say how many lives were lost exactly, because the damage was so sudden and catastrophic. These things wiped out cities. In total, with radiation exposure at the end, there were roughly 135,000 people who passed in Hiroshima, and around 80,000 who passed in Nagasaki. The bomb detonated over Hiroshima was equal to 15,000 tons of TNT. The explosion wiped out everything in a 1.6 kilometer radius. When we think about these weapons being around in World War One, it's not just a matter of, oh, it would have hit here, therefore the explosion would have hit these buildings. No, no, it's much more than that. There's plenty of factors that come in long before the bomb even reaches enemy lines. The B-29 bomber that was used by the United States over Hiroshima, the Boeing plane had four engines. It was first flown in 1942. Back in 1914, planes were barely aircraft worthy. It took years to perfect and then weaponize these planes. They were figuring out how to stay in the air, let alone how to carry a 9,000 pound atomic bomb. Even today, if you're luggage exceeds a certain weight, you're paying extra or you're throwing a few sweaters in the airport garbage. Weight matters. 
So if Wilhelm wanted to wipe the enemy off the map, he would have ideally tried to bomb London and Paris in order to force them into submission. Only the thing is, how do we get it there? We don't have long range bombers yet. The biggest thing at the time were Zeppelins, and Germany used them to raid Britain. And these things caused over 500 deaths, which is not that much compared to what we have now. They used them for the first time to attack British cities in 1915. If the atom bomb was invented around 1918, the only way to drop it was by using this massive blimp. And there was no chance you could fly away from the explosion in one of these and still survive. There's just no chance. And also, those aircrafts were filled with flammable hydrogen, so shooting it down would be much easier than shooting down a B 29 bomber. And we're World War I, at the time, everybody was using 1800s in modern day warfare. So if nuclear bombs all of a sudden came into the picture, many believe that high ranking officials would have deemed nukes as too dangerous. Wilhelm actually avoided bombing London. He was worried he might harm his royal relatives. And if that was the case, there's no chance this guy would have dropped an atomic bomb. There wouldn't be buildings left over, let alone relatives. If nuclear fission was discovered in 1915 rather than in the late 30s, Germans would have probably figured it out first. See, the Germans would have probably asked Albert Einstein to develop an atomic weapon to use against allied forces. And in retaliation, those forces would have gone to British physicist Sir Edward Appleton. So some argue that in this case, it would have just been mutually assured destruction and not a single atomic bomb would have actually been dropped. Just two teams waiting to see what happens. If Germany had created this bomb, it would still rely greatly on where exactly it's dropping. Production wasn't easy for these behemoths, so if the Germans put their resources together and maybe made one or two of these things, they would need a perfect spot with a four mile radius. You also have to think, if Germany used an atom bomb against France, the radiation that I talked about earlier would be too dangerous here. Germany borders France, that's a risky move right there, especially if these scientists figured out how much damage this bomb would cause long term back then. So another option in World War I would be to transport this bomb by using a U-boat and somehow sailing it up to Thames in London. Again, then what? You're decimating the entire area and it's also a one-way trip. It seems like the introduction of nuclear weapons was inevitable, but what do you guys think? We want to hear from you. If a nuclear bomb had been used in World War I, what do you think life would look like today? Sound off in the comments section down below. I've been your host Taylor McWaters and we'll see you next time on Life's Biggest Questions. <laughs> this test changed history. <clears throat> Sorry. Like a asshole, like taking a sip. I hope the editors see this video and they're just like, look at this hole, hand in the pocket, drinking a coffee. What a d Because at this time, the Allied powers had defeated Germany and Europe. Only Japan had intended to fight. Oh, see you guys, that's my, uh, uh, there's a ghost leaving my body. <clears throat> Came the foundation for atomic diplomacy. Diplomacy, holy f is it diplomacy? Yeah, it's diplomacy. Diplomacy, 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 diplomacy. And now we do a history lesson. Oh, did we, did some get cut out?